Hello, welcome back. Um, so let's go ahead and set this case up. We have two anterior implant crowns that we're working on, number eight and number nine. You'll notice here that uh, the computer is defaulted um, to what we use most commonly, which is a, a, a auto-detect biogeneric individual Emax crown. So I'm gonna change that uh, to an implant restoration. Um, I always set them up as multi-abutment, uh, multi-layer abutment crowns. It seems to be easier. You can you can certainly go back and forth and change them as your your design is set up that way. Um, but I usually set them up this way, and if I opt to split it later on in the process, that's fine. Um, these are going to be biogeneric individual crowns. Now the framework material I'm going to use Emacs, which is an Ivoclar product, um, and the tie base. So you can see here we've got Emacs as the veneering structure and the the framework material. Uh, it automatically defaults to that for me. Um, here's my milling device. The tie base we're going to use is a Dense Supply Serona tie base. And these are Nobel Active, not Nobel Replace Select. We're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom of this list. Nobel Active, the 5.0 is the size that you'd use for a regular platform, the gold uh, or the yellow. And then we're using tie bases, not scan posts. Scan posts for a lot of people are easier to use. They're a little bit taller. The tie bases are shorter. And if you've got a deep implant, the tie bases can be difficult to negotiate getting them all the way in um, and being able to see that groove and notch that we talked about a minute ago. So we've got all these set up. So I'm just going to click the two teeth we're working on, number eight, number nine. Um, just verify everything over here is correct. And we can go over to the next step. This is the scanning step. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my face and move it up here so it's out of the view a little bit. And then let's go ahead and do some scanning. <clears throat> so here is you know, the piece that we put together. You'll notice down on the bottom of the screen here we have four different categories we need to fill in. There's the upper jaw and there's the scan body upper jaw so for a lot of dentists, we'll actually take out these tie bases, or before we put the tie bases in, go ahead and scan, right? Um, but for me, I've already put them in there, so I'm just going to use this as my upper jaw and my um, scan body upper, okay? So here's the camera, all right? Let me wipe off some of that disinfectant there. Um, Positioning-wise, you know, generally if this is a patient in the mouth, they'll be laying you know, roughly in this in this orientation. So I like to try to use a fulcrum here, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just start scanning. You'll hear the clicking there, and I like to tell my patients that that clicking is not a Geiger counter. There's no radiation involved, um, but that each of those clicks is a photo, and basically this is a, a video camera. Um, I've learned through the years that less is more when we're scanning. Now that comes with some warnings. You always want to make sure you have a very solid imaging set of the tie bases in particular in the area that you're restoring. Um, but everything else you can you can literally, not literally, but you can skip some of that. Let's turn that off so it doesn't click so much. So here's our image set of that upper we got a little bit of extrapolation right in these areas. Um, I've got canine to canine, which is great. Um, okay, so I don't feel the need to create a separate scan set. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to drag it over. I'm going to release the button, and I'm going to hit copy. So now the computer is replicating that image set over there. And you can see we have the green check, so we're good to go. All right. You could certainly go in and create a separate image set before you put the tie bases in and the scan bodies, and that's totally fine. Um, I didn't do that here. Okay, so here's our lower arch. And again, the only reason I did, um, did it using this technique is we didn't have the tie bases um, in the office, and so we had to take impressions. We had used them on a previous patient. So I'm gonna go ahead and scan the lower arch, and I'm only gonna scan what I need. I'm not gonna scan the entire lower arch. And I think most of you will agree with me, but when you scan a stone model, it tends to scan a lot easier than teeth, um, probably because it's dry and there's not as much saliva and all that stuff, right? So that's plenty. We got a little bit of extraneous imaging there. Um, when we go down to the 
Next image set the buckle. And I'm just going to hand articulate these. They articulate really stably. Um, I do have a, a, a blue bite, a blue moose bite that we took, but these articulate very, very stable in a very stable manner. Um, and you can also see, if I can get it lined up there, that uh, there's no impingement on those tie bases. So um, there's this should work just fine. Um, make sure they orient real tightly and there's no shifting. And then I'm going to take that buckle scan. And I like to kind of sweep up and down. And you can see the computer has already pulled the modeling in. All right. Turn that camera off. Okay, so that's the scanning. Now you'll notice that scanning, granted these are models, you'll notice that scanning took five minutes, maybe? Um, in the mouth it should take the same. Um, if you're spending too much time, time scanning, you're spending, um, number one, too much of your uh, computer memory. Um, it's going to make it more difficult for you to save cases, multiple cases down the road, and it's also going to take a lot longer to um, design. So, um, next step, we're going to move on to the design phase. And this is the part that will take us a little while. Uh, so bear with me. Um, the designing of anterior implant crowns can be, can be challenging um, and a little bit time-consuming, comparatively speaking. But uh, it should be, should be good. So let's move forward.